куртки в карман. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Я Дима. Саша. Леша. Поднись под самый бери. Под самый, самый, самый. Ань, то есть вы не будете ничего с собой перевозить, да? Вы все это просто продадите. Нет, мы ничего не будем, но мы заберем там технику, книги свои, еще у нас два ящика газет и журналов, фотографии, бинки, ну, в принципе, все. Пришел вызов по 102. Да. Такие-то азы за дверями нарисованными, нарисованы грудью, ага. находятся сброя и убухи. А я сейчас спешу релиз быстро, чтобы предупредить, предупредить общественность, что если у меня найдут оружие, что на самом деле никто из нас не занимается ни наркоторговлей, ни торговлей оружием. Да. Что это? Охренеть. Яна, быстро. Я, я куда сказала идти? Кто? Ай, блядь, надо было выходить, когда говорила. Нашли пистолет, гранату и фото э, патриарха Кирилла и Путина под прицелом. At 1 p.m. police came to our office and everything started. They didn't let us go to embassies because we spent the whole day in the police station. A kind policeman gave us a few hours so that we could escape from Ukraine. They could have sent us to prison on that day, but they released us. And we knew that we had to escape right away. And within 24 hours, we left Kiev. the second cake, I guess. Did that one have candles as well? That was a grand party. See, I have phones all over the place. This one was already here. Someone forgot it. We've been living here for two weeks already. Yes. Well, you can see what condition it's in. We live exactly where we train. We spend the nights behind shutters on mattresses. We hang our clothes on chairs and we have a shower cabin. From any normal perspective, these conditions are far from perfect, to say the least. We reassure ourselves that anything's better than spending time in prison. Ты идешь еще, да? На разведку. Да. 
Ситины такие под какого-то. А, да, да, да. Ну, вот эти все и проверяю все эти шоу, то есть стоят эти два человека. Да. Сучка на входе, <laughs> которые <laughs> проверяют. Вначале тогда тоже попрошу представиться. Имя, фамилия, звание, должность. Звание, должность. <laughs> Инна Шевченко, активист of Women's Movement Family. I'm a conspirator. I don't want to say anything about myself. My name is Jana Zdanova. I'm 25 years old. Initially, there were three of us. Anna Gutzel, Alexandra Shevchenko and me. Alexandra Shevchenko recruited people. She handled our PR. She worked with the girls at our training center. I worked as our artist. Photographs, pictures, impressions, our overall appearance. For the first few years, we just put on performances. At some point, it became clear that wasn't very efficient. We needed something bigger, so let's take off our clothes. Let's get naked. We fight against particular patriarchal features. Dictatorship, totalitarianism, macho men in politics. We protest against the sex industry and the church. We're generally against any religion, whatever it is. Religion. Can I answer that question later? I don't want to answer. When the girls went ahead and cut down the cross, they really let themselves down for good. I think that if they wanted to go to the West, they had to cut down that cross. When we cut down the cross, in my country, it was one of the, one of the first time when people publicly had a discussion about religion and religion and church as a part of our society. We are not here to be loved by someone. Sometimes, of course, they say, you are bitches, or you are, uh, I don't know, like witches, we will burn you. <laughs> For a long time, we've held no protests or demonstrations in which we could see the reactions of ordinary people. At the demo under the slogan, One Mom, One Dad, there were people from the radical organization Civitas, who actually attacked us. <laughs> Oh, 
Femen are hysterical and anti-Christian. Their actions go totally unpunished. They'd be prosecuted for what they do in any other country. They entered a sacred place. They did intolerable things. One of them has already got political asylum. The French government supports them completely. It's absolutely scandalous. <laughs> We had different ideas. Simply climb the fence and enter the building. It was better to get in legally, though. Certainly, that would have been a lot more beautiful and easier to do. It's a very complex action. The scheme takes more preparation and serious self-control. We need to prepare the activists and the plan of action. I can't tell you everything. <laughs> Initially, we founded this movement as a response to feminine actions. I decided to infiltrate their group to be in a position to counteract what Femen suggested. It was an infiltration. It was necessary for us to get insight into how they might end up with such ultimately extreme methods of protest. What's behind them? What do they have to suggest? Very quickly, it became quite clear to me who they are. Members of the feminine group are just a group of shameless girls. They have no foundation that you could call an ideology. They discuss such nonsense. Most of all, what impressed me at the feminine session was that it was dedicated to the subject of burning the cellophyte flag. And so, two weeks after that action, they were discussing whether or not they had chosen the right flag. История с Аминой. Она выглядит как классический случай предательства. 
17-year-old Amina Tyler sparked controversy in March by posting topless pictures of herself online. An investigating magistrate is also considering pressing a charge of desecrating a cemetery, which, in Tunisia, could be punished by up to two years in prison. I was in the jail for um, 75 days. I saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of torture. I saw a lot of. I saw a lot of violence against the woman in the jail. I knew I was going to die. That was like, okay, dying. That was like the best thing that can happen. We decided to go to, to Tunis because one of our Tunisian activists named Amina was in jail. Free Amina! Free Amina! So we went there in front of Pal Palace of Justice of Tunis and we, we did this talk. This action, of course, the reaction was very, very violent. We have been beaten up and humiliated. Uh, everything happened to us and we stayed for one month in, in a very difficult jail. I don't know if there is some easy jail in the world, but I can say that in Tunisia it's not easy at all. And we stayed here for one month, and one month after we've been released, Amina, fi finally she was released too. Well, I decided to come to France. France decided to take me. I quit, because I, I'm not feminine anymore. She had so many doubts to come in about money around women, about how we take our decision, about leadership inside women. And she had so many doubts that she decided to, to quit. We, we can accept it, but in another way, of course, we felt a bit betrayed. Many of them uh, said that they felt like kind of betrayed. I, I didn't betray them. They betrayed me. How? Oh. Hiding stuff and doing stuff when I am in the jail, like the actions, the treats, the... The action of in front of the embassy, the prayer, you know, it's like, it's just smashing me. I was there like I was smashed, you know. People come to me and, oh, your group did this. And like, I am convinced that this is a stupid action. I wish she would not be, um, she would not, she would not be able to say such a stupid thing in such an important moment when she went out and when, when she was already considered as a, as a huge symbol for women's liberation in that part of the world. Какой слоган будет? А ты сегодня не наричи? Да. Файмен фэшн, фашизм. Модель иди на Это что же было? Нам меня зовут. Что? Не знаю, мне фэшн диктатура больше нравится. Так это и так и переводится. А это фэшн, ну, типа террор, не только диктатура, террор. Ну, то есть это красивая очень игра слов.
My mother works as a shop assistant. Many people went up to her and said, We saw you, Alexandra, do you know? And she answered through clenched teeth, Of course I know. I'm sure she's worried about me. Every time she asks, Have you found a French guy? When will you get married? So I'm telling you, so we have it for 9th of October, so we, we do it for the same day, okay? Okay. So you do it for, for 9th and we will try to, okay? We will try Ina as a journalist and me as a translator. Do they ask for your real ID when you enter the place? Yes, because you have to show the ID for being the list. ID or, or maybe um, press card, it's okay, or only ID. No, because in Spain there are so many journalists who are freelance, so okay, they ask good. for the ID. Uh, we discussed the action in... <laughs> in Madrid. That's our Spanish branch. Yes. Of course. Femen's main goal is to earn money. They make $120,000 in some European capitals, 60000 in Kiev, and even 40000 in some regional towns. That's the rate. Since we live and work in this world, we have to find some way to sell our ideas. I don't mean sell our actions, not in that silly sense. We want feminism to be in the ideological market, like communism, socialism or nationalism. We want feminism to be in that ideas marketplace. As always, as on any action, we can die. Поменяются приоритеты личные, там политические. Сложно будет себя соскоблить вот этот бренд, я не знаю, образ, образ жизни Феми. Но все будут тебя воспринимать и этих девочек тоже как вот как Феми. I don't want to change it, and I don't feel ashamed for anything, and I I I want to continue. I understand that the form can change of the way I act and, and do this activism, but I will continue till the moment I can continue. <laughs> But for the time being, I see myself only as feminine. I can't even imagine what could happen to make me quit. We won't take up arms and unleash a war against patriarchy. That would mean using its methods. We certainly won't do that. I can't say that famine formed me. Actually, we change every year. The topless protest is getting outdated now. We need something new. We need new goals and objectives. If we ever do start shooting at anyone, I think we'll come to it gradually. Revolution, I mean female revolution, is unavoidable. Revolution without violence, even more so in the patriarchal world, it can't happen without women being violent. We'll die. What else? <laughs> Cualquier grupo parlamentario no tiene ninguna facultad el gobierno para hacerlo.